Okay, everyone. Eyes this way, please. Clear your minds and listen. Have I got your attention now? Did I just persuade you all to listen to me with power? Yeah. I'd say job done then. Yes. Well, I've done my objective and well, I can go home then. <laughs> Except you all know I'm not going to make it that easy for you, don't you? Madam Toastmaster, members and guests, tonight I'm going to show you all how you can change the world and benefit all mankind in the process. And the best part is, it's so easy, you could do it with your eyes closed. You don't have to spend any money. I mean, I'm not here tonight to sell you anything, apart from an idea. And finally, you don't have to learn anything new to start. In fact, you can all start straight away. But hang on. If it's so easy to change the world, then why isn't everyone already doing it? Well, I'll tell you all with one simple word. Laziness! <laughs> Hang on a second. Surely I've got a nerve coming up here to talk to you about laziness. I mean, look at me. Does my figure promote to you someone who is not lazy? <laughs> no, I admit it. I can be lazy from time to time. But I'm lazy about things that are difficult. In my case, exercising. But I'll tell you one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Even I have to be one of the most laziest people in the world. I'm not that lazy that I can't take on this idea and change the world. So if I can do it, anyone can. So, let's take our first step towards changing the world. I'd like you all to picture a shopping centre car park. Now, this is going to be a lot easier for the men in the room because I'm sure most of the women will be focusing on the inside of the shopping centre instead. <laughs> where all the shoe shops are. But do try if you can. A shopping centre car park. Picture in this car park rows and rows of parking spaces. Now, picture in each of these rows we have a trolley return bay about every 10 or 15 spaces. Now, picture a rogue trolley sitting there all by itself, just metres away from its return bay because the previous user was too lazy to walk five metres and put it back. Now, some may call this laziness, others call it ignorance, with their excuses, well, why should I put it back anyway? Someone's paid to collect them. Well, that may be so. But tell that to the person who's just had their car dinged by the said trolley because that lazy person forgot about basic physics that any weighted object with wheels attached can and will roll away by itself. So think about this example for a second. Does it sound that hard to move a few extra metres and put your trolley back? No, not really. Will it benefit mankind? Yes, absolutely. Well, it shouldn't be a very hard change to make then, should it? After all, we're not animals, we live in a society. Let's touch on a few more examples we can all address just to make the world that little bit nicer. We have now an office environment. In the office is a kitchen. This kitchen has facilities to make your lunch and when you've finished, the facilities to clean it up. Now everyone in the office is very busy, but most people can seem to time manage their lunch break to allow the 30 seconds it takes to wash a dish and put it in the dishwasher. So why then do some of you find it acceptable that these people should also allow enough time to wash their plate and yours as well? Because you've just left it there for the office cleaning fairy, who I'm sorry to say, doesn't exist. So this one is fairly easy, folks. It's your mess, it's your responsibility. Let's keep going. We have now a garbage room in a unit complex. The sign says, please don't place rubbish on the floor, it attracts vermin. Instead, please place your rubbish inside the bin. And it's gotten so bad that some places have had to resort to dropping flyers like this one with clear instructions written in three different languages how to put rubbish in a bin. So let me make it really simple for you. Just put your rubbish in the bin then. You wouldn't think we'd have to spend any more time on that one, would you? However, as humour would have it, 
just after I finished writing this speech, I came across this little gem in my lift. A lovely little popper left there for someone to put in the rubbish for them. So let me elaborate on my previous example by saying, not only is it being a good place to put your rubbish, it's also the only place. Now, we could go on and on. There are lots of ways people could do a little better to make the world a bit, a bit nicer, like please use your indicator when you're driving so you don't potentially cause an accident. Or don't turn your music right up at 3am. It's not okay. How do you know that person you're keeping awake isn't a pilot flying passengers in the morning? Are we seeing a pattern here? Would you agree these changes to make are so minute that they're hardly worth mentioning? Now I know they're very particular examples, but there are many out there just like them. Because after all, most of us should know the difference between right and wrong, right? But now maybe some of you are thinking, now you just hang on a second there. I do try and do the right thing, but you know what? We're only human. And we're not perfect. Sometimes it's just forgetfulness that leads to our seemingly inconsiderate behaviour. To that I say, fair enough. I do acknowledge this happens. And I'm not really targeting you, as long as you do try and do your best when you can. So I think I've laid the foundation of my idea tonight. I'm not here to single anyone out in particular. I don't have any clue who or if any of you are guilty of oversights like this. But I'm merely giving you these examples to show you the door. How easy it is to make the world a better place. But only you can walk through that door. If you like to feel that you're a better person and a good contributor to society, only you can make that choice. So I've shown you tonight how easy it is to change. And the world will thank you for it. There should be no reason here why anyone can't adapt these small ideas in life and benefit all mankind. So the next time you find yourself in one of these situations, just remember, do the right thing. Thank you. Madam Postmaster, ladies and gentlemen, David's job this evening was to logically and emotionally persuade us to adopt his viewpoint. Now, who here feels that he succeeded in that this evening? Yes, absolutely did. Objective achieved. Thank you. (laughs) Now, there, I've just deployed one of Dave's very droll methods of getting the audience's attention. The dummies. So... And it may seem sort of glib and funny at the time, but David has, in fact, achieved the broad goal of the speech in doing that. That is, he's convinced us of his idea that we give him our completely and undivided attention to him. So he's already done it. And he considered to, he con- continued to persuade us throughout the speech. He persuaded us logically. I liked at the start of the speech, he told us exactly what he was going to do. That is, tonight, he's going to show us how to change the world and improve people's lives and how he was going to do that and how it can be done straight away. He gave us several examples through the body of it of where we have the chance to choose the right thing. There were four actually. There was the shopping trolleys, the kitchenette at work, rubbish handling and signalling in traffic and I really relate to that last one because... I can't stand people jumping in front of me without indicating. I find it the utmost of rudeness, frankly. So, and he gave sort of a pre-conclusion also. The way he hoped that he had at least laid the foundation of this idea, the idea of making the world a better place and that only we can make that choice. And then the conclusion, he concluded how, so if we find ourselves in that position, you know, to do the right thing indeed. He convinced us emotionally also, and he did this through his raw presence and authenticity, I call it, vis-a-vis lack of notes. Needed zero notes, knew exactly what he was on about. Body language, completely open gestures. This shows sincerity. It's amazing how far this gets you when you use that. Eye contact, he was right with us, with everyone, every 
moment of the speech. His use of pause was powerful and to stress things, voice variety and projection. For example, when he said that why everyone isn't doing this, the right thing, it's one simple word. Laziness! That's an example of how he's used pause and variety in his projection in order to get a very strong point across. Also, his use of those two props. I loved that prop where it's a flyer put out <coughs> how to throw out the rubbish. You know, it just indicates, ironically, how dumb some people can seem. The other prop, and this is where I got a point for improvement, was the so-called popper. I would suggest explaining the picture better and showing it. It's just how neatly this cardboard drink with the self-contained straw fits between the concrete wall and the metal rail. Fits so neatly, yet it's so wrong. It's just a piece of garbage that someone else has to put there. So that's a suggestion. This was such a great speech that I'm struggling to find points for improvement. But one is, in future, you might want to experiment with waxing philosophically on more, even more about it. Maybe bring on a, a tearjerker of a story where someone doing the wrong thing has just had such sad repercussions for someone else and just really hammered some more. But overall, this was an emotive speech, absolutely persuasive, authentic and sincere, and it was presented in an absolutely confident way. Tiny bit of tweaking I've noticed that I've suggested there, particularly the turning up the raw emotion. But in conclusion, it is a rock-solid, foolproof winner of a speech. Toastmaster. <laughs>